It's Denise here from Budo Astrology, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the element air and how you can keep your air currency flowing in your life and in your chart. So, this video is going to pertain to everyone generally. I made these videos elemental so that they could apply to all of us depending on how much air, fire, water we have in our chart. If you don't know what your dominant element is, I will link that video in the description in case you're curious but we're all going to have some air in our charts. Some people have none. So if you have no, in your, no air in your chart, then this video, I guess, is not for you. But everyone else, this video is going to pertain to you. So let's get started. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the air element because I find that the more we are aware of what the different things are within our system, within our chart, the better we'll be able to assess how those energies are doing within us. Remember that I always like to call our energy our currency because depending on how much or how little of it we have is how much we can expend that currency in our life, right? So if you, you, you're all aired out, then that means you are depleted and you're going to need an extra level of self-care. So in the second part of the video, I'm gonna talk about self-care tips for the air within your chart. And this is especially relevant if you are an air dominant person. So first I'm gonna talk about the regular self-care. So when you are feeling pretty in balance, when you are feeling pretty okay with yourself, and then there's the extra, extra, extra large, extra heavy duty version of the self-care. When you are feeling really out of balance and you've been, you've been air slutting it a little bit too much. So this can happen if you are overdoing it with whatever energy within your chart. So without further ado, now let's get into the video. So the air element, what is it? Sometimes people think that it is just your intelligence and they'll be like, oh, I have no air in my chart. That means I'm not very smart. That's not how it works, guys. Everybody has a different kind of intelligence. Remember that there's different kinds of intelligences, but more broadly, air is the connection that we have with other people. When we connect with others intellectually, with communication, with ideas, that is what air is. Think about when air blows, how it moves the leaves in a tree. Imagine all the people being all the leaves in the tree and how when the air blows, you know, they are connected, they touch each other, they move it. Air moves us. It is, it is invisible, but we can see it move us. It can move us in the sense that ideas can move us to do something. So that, that would go into fire, you know, actually moving and doing something. But ideas could really inspire us. And also air is the part within ourselves that wants to go out and touch somebody else intellectually, that wants to mingle, that wants to chit chat with other people. If you lack air in your chart, then you're going to lack those abilities of, you know, having small talk or just maybe gossiping. I used to think that gossiping was like so bad and I looked down on people who gossiped but now I realize that a lot of people gossip just like for fun, like to spend time. And if you don't have that ability, then you are really going to lack the skills to just connect with others on a very light level. So air connects very lightly. Air touches very gently. It's not heavy. It doesn't really get into feelings. It doesn't really get into the deep stuff of life. Air is just the light chatter that you have with people on, uh, on the day to day basis. So, Air is invisible, invisible movement and it connects and stimulates us. It stimulates us intellectually, right? It is also a relational energy. So air people and the air within our charts is always going to be reflecting somebody else or involving somebody else because yes, you have thoughts on your own and that is just like your inner air, but generally air is more about going out and touching other people connecting with others intellectually. So air is curious and it is light and mobile and it also deals with ideologies. Ideologies, everything that has to do with intellect is going to be air. So on a regular basis, if you are a heavily air person or if it is one of your dom if it if it is your dominant element or you have a air rising, then on a regular basis, you need to make sure that you are connecting with others. And this might seem so obvious to you, but I really find that if we don't take a moment to take a step back and really analyze our chart, maybe some of us just focus on our sun sign and maybe you'll have like a water sun and you're just like, oh, but I'm a Pisces. But if you have all this other air 
within your chart, then you're going to have air needs and air people really need to connect with others. And don't let, you know, the quarantine stop you. You can connect with others online as many an Aquarius will tell you. Aquarius people have a tendency to have a lot of online friends or maybe have online communities that they are a part of and they'll be like super active with people there but in their community they don't really have anybody quirky enough to hang out with them. So if you are an air person, then make sure you are connecting with others, really intellectually stimulating yourself on a regular basis. This is really important. And it doesn't have to be something like super highbrow Aquarius. It could be just regular chatter here and there, Libra, Gemini people. They just want to know what's up in everyone's lives. They just like to have information exchange. That is super vital for air people. So make sure you have that. But if you find that you check in with yourself and you realize that, hey, I've been air slutting it a little bit too much. I've been doing too many air things. I am frazzled. I haven't really had a time to, because the air people, especially the Mercury, Gemini people, they could do so much that they end up completely intellectually spent, energetically spent, because that is their currency, remember? Your currency is the energy that you're expending with other people and out in the world. So if you've expended all of your air, then you need to take, take a step back. And what I'm going to suggest that you do is connect with the other elements. So first of all, you need to connect with water. And what I mean by that is connect with yourself. Really check in and see how am I feeling after all of this connection that I've been having with other people. Sometimes air people can be, especially like Libras for example, can be so other focused because remember that air wants to connect with others. And they could be so other focused and know what's going on with everybody else's life but they forget what's going on within them. They forget to take a moment to connect with themselves and really see what's up in their own life or in their emotional center. What is going on in your emotional center? So the next thing you could do if you have been air slutting it up too much, if you've been doing too many social activities, whatever that may be, you know, you might be like Denise, like it's quarantine, like we can't even go out, but sometimes you just text a little bit too much. Like sometimes you can just be like sending text messages all day long and you didn't take a moment. You don't take a moment to ground yourself and find presence within yourself. So that's the next thing. Ground yourself, connect with earth. And what I mean by that is uh, have a grounding routine. Maybe if you are completely frazzled and you've been doing too many things, you're depleted, you are out of air. So out of air meaning you are, in Spanish we would say, sengento. you've been around too many people. You need to create a stabilized routine that is more slow paced because air people, particularly Geminis, they can be more fast paced because remember that air moves quickly. Uh, it is the most mobile of the elements. I think it's more mobile than water. Yeah. So, yes. So you need to ground yourself and find a way to have a place in your routine where you're not mobile. So maybe also mobility can be a mobility of ideas. So make sure that you're taking some time to just have peace and quiet with yourself. Have Even if it's just 30 minutes a day where you turn your phone off or you put the little moon sign, something that is do not disturb. And you just take a moment to just be with yourself and just be. And don't do anything, don't read anything, don't listen to a podcast, don't listen to music, don't consume anything because air people could also consume a lot of information. And this could also drain you very much, Gemini in particular. This Virgo, but that's another story. But okay, so moving to the next thing is air people can have a lot of ideas. And I have a friend who always has all these business ideas and he's always calling like my husband and is just like, hey, like we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do like all of these things that he wants to do, but where's the fire? Really reach into the fire sometimes and see hey, like all of these ideas that I have, all these things that I wanna do, am I actually taking steps to do them or am I just talking about them? So this can be an act of self-care for you if you find that your plans or your dreams aren't coming into fruition. And this, you know, it can be kind of disappointing to have all these great ideas and nothing ever comes of them. And that is really because you need to take a step back and connect with your fire and see, hey, am I actually taking the steps necessary to have these ideas come true? Even these trips that you're planning or all these amazing ideas that you have, are you actually doing something to make them manifest in the real world. Manifestation is more of an earth thing, but you combine it with fire and you just 
put it out there to the world. So that's all that I have for you guys. I hope that you find this video interesting or helpful in some way or other. I find that self-care should be individualized for each individual person based on their chart and their life situation. So I tried to make this as broad as possible so that I could hit as many people as possible. But I do really like to tailor make things for my particular clients. And this is something that I'm going to start offering on my website. So a reading that has to do with self care, I'm going to be listing that like this week because in October my shop is opening up again. I've had a lot of readings late um, recently. I'm really grateful for everyone who got a reading. I hope that you loved it. I really have a great time doing them and I am kind of transitioning towards maybe doing more Skype readings uh, because reports are super time consuming and I find that I'm going to tell you the same thing anyway and you could just record the Skype call and you'll just have my face forever talking to you about your chart. So. If you're interested in a reading in the future, just know that they're transitioning. We're in a transition phase right now and the self-care readings are going to be available very soon. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check out my website, budoastrology.com. And if you like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.